Hi all, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Vishnu Dutt and I work for Cisco System. As you guys already aware that we are running this network interview preparation series, right? But believe me, the intention of this series is not to disclose the networking questions to you. The intention of this series is to learn networking fundamentals and basics, okay? So having said that, let's see what we are going to discuss in today's session. We are going to discuss trace rule because this is the question which is asked by in many, uh, many interviews. And believe me, this question is asked because there are several beat, bits and pieces behind trace route protocol. And we need to understand all those if we want to understand trace route, right? We all know that it is a troubleshooting tool available to all the network engineers, right? But exactly what happens? Why, uh, why behind trace route is really, really important, okay? So first thing first, what we are going to do, we are going to uh, learn as usual. We have a same strategy to learn any complex thing. Although trace route is not that complex, but there are multiple pieces to it. Okay, so as you can see here, we have a uh, big problem here right now. You can see, and the problem is how trace root work. And if you want to learn that, if you want to understand that, then we need to break this problem into multiple pieces, right? And if I break this with the use of this hammer, this problem is going to be divided into multiple parts. Okay, one part is going to be ICMB and ping, the other part is time to live, and the uh, the, the last part is UDP. So we need to understand how ICMP work or basically why behind ping, how ping work. We need to understand the concept of time to live or TTL. We need to understand little bit of at least UDP because UDP is used in trace route, okay? In Cisco's implementation at least. So if I say that if we understand these pieces, individually what pieces icmp ttl and udp right if we have a solid understanding of that we are going to combine them and then you will be amazed to see that you are going to get the concept of how trace root work so here is the agenda what we are going to discuss we are going to discuss icmp and ping we are going to discuss ttl we are going to discuss some bits and pieces about udp which is a <coughs> uh, protocol at tcp layer sorry, uh, at a transport layer. Then we are going to see how to read packets in Wireshark because this is important. And basically I have getting requests from a lot, uh, lot of guys, a lot of students, which says that at least tell us that how we can see packet, how we can understood a given packet in the Wireshark. So we are going to see that also. And last, when we are done with all these four pieces, we are going to see how trace route works. So once again, this video is going to be a long video. And the reason is uh, because we need to cover multiple pieces of trace route, right? Multiple information that is required to understand trace route. So, and, and one more thing, this video is going to be useful if you are coming in sequence. So we are into the question number seven of this interview preparation series. If you have seen the initial uh, initial videos like uh, video number one to six, then basically this video is going to make more sense to you. Having said that, although three minutes or four minutes are, have already spent, but believe me, this is required. Whenever you start learning a new concept, just think about it. Just think the why behind it, right? So first thing first. So now let's talk about ICMP and ping. So as you know, ICMP is Internet Control Message Protocol. Right? If you do not know, let's see what exactly it is. So basically, as you know, that at data link layer, we have ethernet or the MAC addresses. You all know this, at network layer, we have IP. And along with IP, we have ICMP protocol here. So basically the role of this ICMP protocol is to tell me about what errors are going on on my network, right? What is the meaning of error? So to understand that, let's try to, uh, draw few routers. So I have this router here, which is R1. And then I have another router, which is R2 here, right? So on this interface, basically, I can send maximum up to 5, 1500 bytes of data, suppose, right? 
and on this interface which is my r2 i can send only 500 bytes of data suppose this is my maximum transmission that i can i can send over this and this is there is a limitation on that we can have that so what is going on here is that this guy is generating an ip packet which is of suppose 1500 which has 1500 bytes of data so no problem this guy will be uh, r1 see that okay if it wants to go to somewhere and i have a route to in my routing table as, as you already know that routers develop routing table and on the basis of routing table they forwards packets right? so this guy is going to have some ip address which is the destination ip address suppose suppose that is x dot x dot x dot x router one is going to check whether this route is available in my routing table or not and on the basis of that it it finds that yes the route is there and i need to send it towards r2 and that is why it is going to place this ip packet on the link between r1 and r2 similarly this route uh, this ip packet is going to be reached at r2 with the destination address x dot x dot x dot x when r2 receive this packet it is again going to so do the same operation it is going to see its routing table and finds that okay if it wants to send it to the destination he or it needs to send it over this interface it is as simple as that right but here is my problem the ip packet has the length of 1500 and uh, 1500 bytes right and i have mentioned in this ip packet that I am not eligible to fragment. Nobody should uh, cut me into pieces, right? I have, I can mention that in my uh, IP packet, okay? So I have to see that, okay, I have a route uh, uh, for x dot x dot x, and if I want to send it, I need to place it on this interface. I am writing this from yellow now. But here is the problem. The problem is the maximum transmission uh, of a maximum transmission unit or basically i can send only 500 bytes of data at once right uh, if, if you consider if i am receiving ip packet i cannot send the 1500 byte uh, packet because the maximum transmission unit is 500 bytes only so what this guy can do this guy can divide this packet into three parts 500 bytes 500 bytes and 500 bytes but I have specifically mentioned in this packet, do not, do not uh, divide me or do not fragment me, right? So here is the problem. R2 cannot send this uh, uh, message and it is not the fact that it does not have a route for it. It is having a route for it, but still it could not send the message out of this interface. And the reason is because it can send only 500 bytes in a packet, right? So what is going to happen? R2 is going to discard this. It is going to drop this message. But one thing which it does is it informs the source of this packet. The source of this packet is R1 because this packet was generated at R1. And it says that, dude, I get your message. I get your IP packet. But the problem is I cannot forward it because there is one interface uh, which is uh, attached to me and I cannot send a packet more than 500 bytes. And you have informed me, please do not fragment me, right? So how R2 is going to inform the source? R2 can inform the source with a protocol which is known as ICMP, right? So ICMP is a protocol which is having different type of messages, right? One such type may be that R2 is saying, uh, I cannot fragment. right it can simply say that and if i cannot fragment i am dropping your packet because fragmentation is needed but you have informed me that basically fragmentation is not done right there must be some other messages also for example to any xyz reason uh, this router needs to drop a packet it is going to inform with some message type for example it can have it can say ttl is expired although if you do not know ttl we are going to talk about it no no worries it can say the time to live message is uh, so basically time to live 
or basically TTL value is expired, it can inform. But how it is going to inform all this thing? It is going to inform all this thing using ICMP protocol. So ICMP basically having different type of messages which a router can send if it experienced an error. And there is an error, right? There was a IP packet. Router 2 cannot send it. It needs to discard it, but it needs to tell the uh, 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 source that basically this packet cannot be forwarded because I cannot forward it, but it needs to inform him and that is why ICMP is used. So there are many uh, messages in ICMP which we call them as basically ICMP messages which talk about the errors in the network, right? Or basically we can say uh, whatever is going on my network, I can get the gist of it through ICMP messages, right? Similarly, there is a message which is ping, which we call ping echo. Ping echo request and ping echo reply. What is the meaning of it? Suppose I have two uh, two computers, and if this is initiating a ping echo, and it reaches to this computer, this has to reply with the ping reply message, right? So echo request, echo reply. But what are these messages? These are the messages from ICMP protocol. It is as simple as that. ICMP is the protocol which is which is which has uh, defined all these messages. TTL expired, port unreachable. If whatever I am going to say, I will be explaining. Or the ping echo request, echo reply. So these are the different type of messages which are explained in ICMP. And where ICMP is working, ICMP is working on uh, trans uh, network layer protocol, right? So if I are to reply with this ICMP message. Any message which is ICMP, it needs to encapsulate this message into IP protocol. Mean it needs to say what is the source and destination IP address. And it came to know, right? The source of this packet which it cannot forward is obviously R1, and that is why it is putting the source of this packet as a destination when it is uh, uh, when the ICMP packet is going back. It is as simple as that. So I think by this time you understand ICP. But let's discuss something about this ping message also right so for that i have another board right let's talk about what ping is so first thing first why we use ping ping is a way to know whether other party where i want to ping is alive or not it is there or not and the second thing is it tells me about how much time in how much time i can get to the uh, uh, receiver how much time it is going to take to get to the receiver and coming back from the receiver right and we call that as a delay time so if i write ping 4.4.4.4 where on this router what is the meaning of it whenever i write ping 4.4.4.4 uh, icmp is going to create a message which we call as icmp echo right or ping echo message and then basically because it is generated at this router r1 what is going to happen we are going to put an ip header and on top of it so basically whatever icmp is generating it is data for this ip header right we all have learned about it we all know and that is why i am saying come in sequence if you come in sequence then basically Sequence of what? Questions, right? If you understood last six questions, these are going to be piece of cake for you, right? So then basically we make sure that we have IP header and in IP header what we write? In IP header we write source and destination MAC address. So source MAC address, sorry, uh, no, so source and destination IP address. So source address is going to be 192.168.12.1 why because when this router sees its routing table and check where is my 4.4.4.4 uh, 0 24 route is it is going to see that it can be reachable via r2 r2's ip address is 12.2 right and where from where it can be reachable from this interface and the ip address configured on this interface is 12.1 that is why the source of this icmp Eco packet is going to be 192.168.12.1 and the destination is going to be 4.4.4 .4 .4 .4, 
which is where I want to ping this, right? Where, where, which is where I want to send this ping, right? So this is going to be my IP, and this basically whatever it is, the ICMP eco message, it is, it is my data. Do not worry, I will showcase you all these things on the Wireshark. So do not worry about it, okay? So what is going to happen? This packet is going to be reached here. R2 will see, okay, the destination address is going to be 4.4.4.4. And to reach to that, it is going to uh, forward it to R3, right? R3 will see, okay, I have a route towards 4.4.4.4. It is going to send this to here, which is your 4.4.4.4. Right. And basically at R4, when this packet reached with the destination address 4.4.4.4, R4 will see, okay, this is a route which is attached to me because I have an interface which is having the IP address configured like 4.4.4.4. And basically the symbol is for the loopback interface. If you do not know about loopback, it is very simple. Just like router has physical interfaces, I can create virtual or software interfaces on it, right? Why? There are many reasons for it. One such reason is that the software interfaces are always going to be up on this router. Those are not dependent on these physical interfaces, right? So if I create an interface, loopback interface, and if I assign an IP address, if this router is up and running, this interface is going to be up and running. This is the only concept. This is the only thing with loopback. So we have a loopback. At R4, I have configured 4.4.4.4 over it, and the IP address is IP packet is going to be received at R4. When R4 sees, okay, this is attached to me, this is my loopback interface, right? So what message it got? It got uh, ICMP eco message, right? So everybody understand, every device on the internet understand this ICMP eco message, right? So by default, they are planned. They will be reply it. If they are receiving ICMP eco, they are going to reply it. And they are going to reply with a reply message, which we call ICMP eco reply. It is as simple as that, right? And where the reply is going to go again the same path and it is going to come here. So when R1 gets the reply, it comes to know that that host that 4.4.4.4 is alive because it just replied me right i ping him with echo and it is going to it is reply it has replied me with the, it has replied me with a reply message it is as simple as that and if it is replying me then it is alive it is as simple as that right but along with that basically ping uh, uh, this ping command also tell me that what is the to and fro distance in terms of time? What is the to and fro time? For example, while sending this packet, basically it took me maybe uh, eight millisecond, and while coming back, it is 17 millisecond. I'm, I do not know, uh, sorry. While coming back, it is uh, say 10 millisecond. So ICMP is going to tell me that basically I, I, I have sent echo, I have reply, uh, uh, I have got the reply, which is ICMP reply message, and then basically the total time uh, which 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 happens between these two guys is approximately 18 millisecond. So I can see the I can say safely that the to and fro distance between me and 4.4.4.4 is actually 18 millisecond. So ICMP protocol is uh, sorry, ping protocol or the ping message is delivering two things. And this is a tool because basically when you want to know that other person is alive, you just see ping and just give the IP address. If it is replying, then I'm pretty sure that it is alive, right? And the second goal, which is uh, the second thing which ping messages uh, or through ping protocol I can get is the to and fro distance. So if I can showcase you uh, uh, this thing on, uh, on this command prompt, suppose I want to ping www.google.com. So let's see what is the output of it. So if you can see here, uh, if I write down from this pen, I am doing a ping from my host towards www.google.com. And what I'm getting back is 
that I am getting reply from google.com and the IP address of the google.com is this one, right? Uh, how we were able to resolve google.com to an IP address, this is a totally different discussion which we are going to do as a part of this interview preparation series. Do not worry about it, but for now, just try to understand. Google is replying me and the Google IP address is this one, 142, 250, 71 and four, right? So I am sending four bytes, sorry, four uh, eco requests and Google is replying me with the four reply packets and that is what I can say, I can see here. Packet sent is four, received is four, and there is no loss, right? And one important thing which I, I was mentioning, the time period to reach to Google and come back, it is actually time is equal to 10 milliseconds. It is as simple as that, right? And then basically the second packet took only nine milliseconds, third is nine milliseconds, fourth is nine milliseconds, and here average is basically nine milliseconds. So I think, from now on, if you see this output, you should understand the meaning of it, right? And what is this ping? This ping is just a message defined by ICMP. ICMP defined so many messages like this, which help us to know that what is going on inside my network, whether that host is alive or not, or basically what are the errors on my network, right? Just as, as you mentioned that basically if we are not able to fragment a packet, that device is going to send me, I'm not able to fragment the packet and I'm dropping it, right? So it is as simple as that. But what I would like to showcase you here is uh, uh, from this fact that ICMP and ping are kind of a, uh, ping is basically uh, a message type of ICMP and that is it, right? So having said that, this is, interesting thing let me just remove it there you go and now let's talk about our second board so from till now i'm presuming that you understand what is icmp and ping the second thing which is very very important is time to live right as you all know we have all discussed about how to avoid loops in layer 2 network right and how to avoid loop in layer two network? You all know we use the spanning tree protocol. We understood the spanning tree protocol, how it worked, and basically how it was avoiding loop. So if I may say, then there is there are chances of this loop in layer three environment also. Okay, but we till now we haven't studied routing protocols and how these loops can be formed. But for now, just try to understand that I have created a network with some static routes, uh, which is uh, which are leading to this loop. And what is the meaning of the loop? First thing first, right? Suppose this R1 is receiving a packet with destination IP address of 5.5.5.5. I'm not sure whether this 5.5.5.5 is maybe somewhere here, right? Uh, or it is not there at all. But what I have done is, this is the IP packet, which is received by R1. And here, if you can see that I have the routing table for this R1. R1 is going to see that, okay, 5.5.5.5 is reachable via R2. So what it is going to do is it's going to send this packet to R2. Now, this packet is right here. Which packet? 5.5.5.5. Now R2 is going to check its routing table, which is 5.5.5.0 slash 24 via R3, right? Routing table is indicating that if you want to send this packet to this host, which is 5.5.5.5, you need to send it towards R3. And this is what the routing table says. It is as simple as that. So now your R2 is going to forward this packet here. Okay, so now your packet is here, which is 5.5.5.5, which is your IP packet. Now R3 looks into his routing table and I have created a static route in that, which says, if you want to reach to 5.5.5.5, you need to again go to uh, R1. And this is where the interesting thing starts happening, right? The packet is again at R1. If the packet is again at R1, R1 is going to see its routing table again forwarding here. And th there is a loop, guys, right? 
we avoided this loop using a spanning tree in layer 2 networks but here we are talking about layer 3 networks where routers are connected with each other but we could see this problem although you can say that vishnu you have done this you have created all these routing and that is why it is happening but believe me even in the case of routing protocols also this situation can occur how we are going to learn that whenever we are going to learn about a different type of routing protocols like ospf bgp i will showcase you that there are cases in which you can you are going to see this routing loop it means it means that routing loop is a problem at layer 3 also but at layer 2 we have a spanning tree to avoid it but at layer 3 even ip protocol uh, had thought about it that how to avoid a, a loop can i avoid it uh, using any other thing and there is a thing there is a yeah, there is a, spec a specific mechanism through which you can avoid this loop and how you can avoid this loop let's see that so basically in ip header so what you are seeing this is the ip packet uh, in this ip packet there are multiple fields i have showcased you only one which is only destination ip address it can have destination ip address the header ip header it is going to have source ip address and many more fields right in these many more fields there is one specific field or a number which we call as ttl or time to live now let's see what is the meaning of this time to live so what what's going on this ttl value is part of your ip header and basically it starts with suppose 255 right so the router which is creating this packet suppose this, uh, this packet was created by this router it is going to put this as in its ip header this value ttl value right which is 255 now when it receives by this r2 guy right it is going to check its routing table that okay i have a route for it but now the ttl value is actually 255 which is sent by r1 right if i need to send and router is programmed to do that it is going to see this ip header it is going to see what is the value configured at ttl the ttl value is 255 if this router wants to send this packet towards r3 right it is going to decrease or decrement this ttl value to one it means that when this packet reaches here the ip packet right this is packet is complete ip packet this ttl value is going to be decreased by one it is going to be 254 here again this packet is going to be checked against the routing table and r3 has decided to send it to here but this time when it reaches here the ttl value is going to be what one less which is 253 right for this ip packet whatever in this ip header whatever we have it is as simple as that right it means that whatever what is going on whenever router receives a packet it checks the ttl value and whenever it routes it it decreases the ttl value and we have tell routers that this value should be a number which is greater than zero if this number is zero you cannot forward that packet at all now i think you start thinking about it how it is going to avoid the loop indefinite loop right I'm not saying it is going to avoid the loop from the beginning, but what is going on? A packet is revolving and revolving and revolving, right? But it has to be stopped somewhere. And who is going to be responsible to stop it? This TTL value. Because now you can see that it is going again back to here with TTL value of 252, right? Then 51, then 50. And eventually it is going to be one or and eventually it is going to be zero suppose that this router when it reaches when this packet reaches again which packet 5.5.5 .5 after revolving so many times it reaches here and the ttl value suppose here is one what is going to happen at r2 r2 checks its routing table okay basically i have a route for it but the ttl value is one 
If TTL value is one, I cannot send this packet because I have to reduce this to TTL is equal to zero. It is as simple as that. Okay, and if the TTL equal to zero in this IP header, then basically I cannot forward it because this is how, how I am going to avoid the loop. So I agree with you guys that this packet is revolving for 254 times, but at least it is going to be stopped. But in Ethernet without STP, there was no such mechanism. There was no such mechanism at Ethernet level of tree time to live, right? And that is why the packet is revolving and revolving. And that is why you can see the broadcast storm. And because of that, all the your switches, CPU went to 100%. But here, what we are seeing is, although there is a loop, but there is the loop for a fixed amount of time. After that, once the TTL value reaches to 1, then basically no, there is no uh, the route is not going to be forwarded because if it needs to forward it it, it needs to reduce it to zero and TTL value zero is not going to be sent. It is as simple as that, right? I hope you understand. But uh, you can say that there could be a legitimate uh, uh, number of routers suppose we have 250 or 260 routers so my packet if i if the packet is coming it is going to be 255 then 53 then and then basically it is expired here and the packet is not going to reach to the destination right but believe me 254 if i say that 255 because each this value is decremented at each router at each hop so it means that you are saying that your network is 255 hops long and believe me there is no network in the in this universe which is having uh, these many hops right otherwise the ip packet is so the longest maybe i have seen the 30 to 35 or maybe 40 hops right if you talk talk to google amazon or basically there are many routers in between in a path but i haven't seen more than 40 so you do not worry about it that this 255 value is less this is way too much right i have never seen two hosts which are 255 hops apart okay so it is not going to be the case for you that uh, your packet without having loop it is going to be dropped but yes if you can make that then uh, basically what is going on at the last router when it becomes zero it is going to be not forwarded and this router is here in this case the r2 right so 2 ttl means it is there to avoid the loops in the network right in the layer 3 network it is as simple as that so what we have studied till now we we talk about three things right if you need to understand trace route you need to understand icmp which we have already covered no problems if you need to understand trace route you need to understand the concept of ttl you already know that now third thing and the last thing is what was that guys uh, the third thing is you need to understand some concept behind udp right udp i'm not going into detail of udp but for this conversation whatever is required we are going to discuss right Again, you can see to understand UDP, I have this diagram and you all are familiar with this diagram, which is very, very easy. No problems at all. Right? What is this diagram? We have two computers, say computer number A, computer number B. And if they do want to communicate over this uh, Internet, right, they have implemented this TCP IP protocol suite in them. So router uh, uh, application, sorry, this laptop A or the computer A has this TCP IP model here. And this also has this TCP IP model here. Very simple. Now, as you know, TCP works on transport layer here. So does UDP. There are two protocols majorly used in transport layer, which is TCP and UDP. Now we are talking about UDP because TCP, if you want to learn TCP, believe me, there is a 12 hours course on my uh, website available, on my channel available, right? Uh, there is a 12 hour course, which is going to explain new TCP. But to 
talk about TCP. When TCP wants to talk to, means when computer A wants to talk to B over TCP, it checks whether B is there or not. It tries to create the connection. Once connection is established, it sends its data on top of it. But no connection, no TCP data. It is as simple as that. But UDP, on the other hand, works slightly different. It doesn't care. It doesn't care whether whether the recipient is there or not, I will send the data and it is as simple as that. Whatever I am receiving from this application, whatever I am receiving, the message, what I am going to do is I am going to put my header on top of it and I will be sending it towards the network layer. Network layer is sending it here and then basically here. You all understand the responsibility of network layer is to send data from one host to another host. But the responsibility of transport layer here, in this case UDP, is to send this data to the particular application which is running here. These applications can run on different ports. Maybe application number one can run on port number 80. Application number two can run on port number 90 and so on. So there might be many applications running on this computer. Network layer through IP address can send this data to this host itself. But network layer responsibility over is over now. I have delivered the data to the host. Now this is the responsibility of transport layer. In this case, we are talking about UDP. It is the responsibility of UDP to send this data to a particular application. To which application? Of course, these are working on different ports. Maybe this is 100, this is 101. How this receiver is going to know that to which application it needs to send this data? And that is why whenever this UDP puts its header, it is going to put port numbers into it. That what is the destination port? Destination port number. Suppose this port number was 90. And of course, it is going to put the source port because you, you want to know uh, what is the source port from this message is coming so that you can reply back, it, back to it. But to, think, but to keep things simple, just try to see that whenever this UDP put this header, it is going to put this destination. If you, if you understand TCP, you come to know that UDP is pretty simple because it doesn't care about whether connection making or not. It just take the message, it put that header, inside that header is going to put that uh, uh, destination port when this message receives here right transport layer is going to see its header and inside that header it is written that this message is for port number 90 or the application which is listening to this port number 90 which is this one and transport layer is going to deliver this message to this application which is application number two although there are many messages which are running here but transport layer is intelligent enough to know to which application is going to deliver this message it is as simple as that right but now the question arises: why tcp why udp does not make connection why does why why doesn't it care about whether the receiver is there or not it just sends a packet because the use case is different right for tcp we want to make sure that something is there we want to make sure every packet is reaching right but suppose you are talking, two persons are talking, right? And they are on a video call, suppose. And suppose if they are not on the video call and maybe they are on the audio call itself, right? There is no point that if some data related to that uh, 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 audio is missing, for example, it is sending, hi, how are you? And R is missing. It is not, uh, no point to send this, hi, how, uh, to send that R at later point of time because that is the real time conversation going on right so that is why you just take the data you send it take the data send it but on the other end application uh, uh, tcp or the tcp transmission control protocol layer responsibility was to send all the packets because there are some application which cannot deal with this loss of data but yes during the real time communication during the real time video or audio communication you do not care if some packets are not there then those, those are not there there is no way uh, that you you for, forward them at the later stage and during the other conversation uh, this r is coming to you right so as i mentioning that these three suppose this packet is how this is r and this is u this is the real time communication going on over the udp right 
so it doesn't it is okay that if r missed in, in, and high and u is uh, 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 reaching to this destination right it is okay because at uh, because at later point of time you do not care that but basically that's fine because this is the but if if somebody is sending this r to the communication after 5 minutes to you it is not going to be very useful for you right so different type of applications different type of protocol udp has developed for different type of application tcp has been developed had been developed for different type of application it is as simple as that but the matter of the fact here is when udp takes data from application it just put a header inside that header it puts the destination port source port checksum and basically other other parameters also we are not going into that the most important parameter is destination port through destination port this guy comes to know that where which application we need to deliver this suppose in an example in a case we are sending this message and this message is for application number 90 but this application 90 is not there at all on this host v what is going to happen right because transport layer has seen the data that it is for application which is uh, listening at port number 90 i need to deliver it but that nobody is listening at that port 90 basically that port is closed it means that application is not there and if that application is not there then basically what b is going to do with that what b will say that boss there is no application running but it needs to explain this to the sender which is this one and that is why and that is where your icmp comes into picture right transport layer say boss you are delivering me a data which is to a port which is not open where there is no application so transport layer say i am dropping this packet because there is nobody there to take 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 it from me right but why i am dropping it i'll tell you the reason the reason is that port number 90 is not open there is no application which is running on this port number 90 and if there is no application i am discarding it but i am telling you why i am discarding it now network layer knows and eventually icmp knows right so this is the responsibility of this icmp at the network layer to tell the source that your packet is dropped and the reason is that because the port is not open so basically there is a message in icmp which is called port unreachable right and if a gets this message that port unreachable it means that it come to know that basically uh, the port at which or the application to which i am sending the message is not listening there right as i mentioned that this icmp protocol is meant to do all these things it built to do all the thing all these things so that receiver or the or the sender understand that okay there is nobody there to listen right and then basically whatever this guy can want to do similarly as this ttl if i talk about this ttl suppose r2 at r2 this ttl gets expired because if it wants to send it it is going to make it to ttl0 and if it ttl0 it is not going to forward it here it is as simple as that so what is going to happen r2 is going to reply r1 with the icmp message that boss ttl is expired and this icmp message is known as a uh, time ttl expired message where it is going to go it is going to go to r1 right r1 will see okay ttl expired means basically uh, uh, that uh whoever is generated this message suppose this message was generated by uh, this source this source this address right the ttl uh, expired message is going to deliver to the source right again this is icmp and it is talking about there is an error in the network the meaning of error is that somebody has dropped the packet and the dropping of packet meaning that basically it is the ttl value becomes zero and that is why i am expiring that is why i am discarding the message so you try to understand all these things we have discussed three things right and all these three things are interrelated i am again and again saying we have discussed three things first thing first the first thing first which is your icmp or ping you understood it pretty well no problems then we talk about concept of ttl you understood this as well right 
ICMP is to send error messages or to talk about this ping, right? If TTL expired, ICMP is going to send a ping. Then we talk about UDP, and in UDP we talks about port. And if there is not, and if the at the sender at the receiver side, if the application is not listening on a port, then basically UDP, uh, you are going going to get the uh, message ICMP, which says port unreachable. But we understood UDP. We understood that applic from application transport layer is going to receive the data, and then UDP is going to put the header on top of it. And inside that header, we are going to have those ports. We all know this. If we combine them, if we use the knowledge from them, then we are going to explain the trace route. But before that, before that, as I promised that I will let you know how to read the packet. So first thing first, we are going to read the packet in the, we are going to see the packet in Wireshark and see how to read that packet. What are the different fields of it, right? Where is data link layer? Where is uh, 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 where is IP layer? Right? We need to understand that so that whenever we see the trace root packet later, it is going to be piece of cake for us, right? So let's see how. So we are going to see that how basically in Wireshark my ICMP ping packet looks like. So for example, at R1, what I'm going to write, I'm going to write ping what i'm going to write ping 4.4.4.4 okay so what is going to happen r1 whenever it sees okay somebody wants to ping 4.4.4.4 for from me towards this guy which is your r4 right what is going to happen it is going to generate a icmp echo message this is going to be the ICMP. And what is inside there? Echo. It is as simple as that. But I will be using different pens to draw that different header. But to send this ICMP, we need to put the IP header. Here you go, the IP header. The destination of this IP address is going to be 4.4.4.4, .4 which is the destination IP. And the source IP is from anywhere, which is leaving this router. Suppose there is only one interface on this router and the IP address is con configured as 12.1. Although I have written only two last octets, the actual IP address is 192.168.12.1 and here is a subnet for it. It is as simple as that, right? But if I need to place this packet, so by the way, uh, this is your source IP and this complete is your what? This is your IP header. And by the way, guys, what is this? This is the data for what? This is the data for your IP, IP packet. So this complete is going to be, this complete thing is going to be your IP packet in which this is data and this is header. Now, if you want to place this packet into this interface, you are going to put one more header on top of it, which you call as L2 header or data link header. What data link is going to contain? The MAC address of this interface and uh, and the MAC address of the destination, right? So suppose the MAC address is x dot x dot x dot x. Uh, this is your source and the destination is y dot y dot y dot y. Not this is basically the format, maybe x colon x colon x, and here it is y colon y colon y. Maybe the hexadecimal numbers, and you know all these things by the way. But what I want to uh, showcase is the blue color is your data link header, right? And whatever behind it, whatever behind it, it is your going to be your data, right? So we are going to see exactly this message when you write ping 4.4.4.4.4. R1 is going to generate this. Right, and we are going to see this in uh, in our Wireshark. So let me show you this ping packet on the Wireshark. Here you go. Here we have this message, right? So it is going from where to where? First thing first. Let let's see. We are talking about echo ping request here. This is my message number 90. So I have used a filter in Wireshark where I have written ICMP. So that is why it is showing me only ICMP. 
we will talk about we can talk about what filters how uh, we can use this, uh, this in wireshark because this is the problem of many students of many guys that we see a lot of things going on this wireshark pack packet capture file right and that is why we do not concentrate on a particular protocol so that is where filter used to come right filter can be used in this way so we will be talking about it do not worry about it but for now just try to understand i have router r1 this one i have generated the packet right and this packet was leaving from 12.1 this was the interface and the destination of this packet was 4.4.4 source is 12.1 right it was as simple as that but now let's see what exactly how to read this packet right so if i click on this i have already clicked on this here right so let me so you are going to see like this and you all know that basically first we have a uh, physical layer then we have data link layer and then we have network layer right but actually if you see here if you see here it is from top to bottom okay so what is going on first thing first you are going to see this frame 19 here what is the meaning of it 19 is only this number that is perfectly fine but frame you do not need to worry about it at all because wireshark has built this frame whatever we have just to make sure that we know that when we were able to capture this packet what is the time when we capture this packet so believe me this is not a part of this tcp ip stack and that is why most of the people confused about it right because tcp ip stack start from physical layer or basically the data link layer because we do not talk about physical here so here frame 19 just mean what is the meaning of this frame this is a pseudo header that is not there at all in real life but wireshark has put this to make sure that we understand more with respect to when we receive this packet on the interface where we are capture it some timing details that is why you do not need to worry about it at all do not see this right whenever you see ethernet 2 this is what your data link layer is right you are going to see ethernet header here which is talk about source mac destination mac and many things which you can see here this is the source mac address this is the destination mac address and that is it right then basically here if we talk about this is your network layer right this is your network layer and finally what we are going to see here is something which can work on network layer on top of it for example if it was a tcp packet then i could have seen here basically this is my tcp but right now as you know whenever i type ping right at network layer icmp protocol works and that is why it is creating the echo message if you do not believe me let's see this now as you can see basically it's in reverse order but what we are going to do we are going to read from bottom to top right so whatever we are getting at the icmp we will going to see that and you know that we have uh, whenever we write uh, ping something the message was created by icmp and then basically on top of this icmp what is going to happen there is going to be ip header and that is what you can see here and top of it what is going to happen there is going to be l2 header or data link header which is going to see uh, which you are going to see here right this is your ethernet this is your ip protocol version 4 and this is your icmp right so this is how you are going to see this packet but now let's see inside these packets which is going to be very very important so let me delete this again select this and let's see we are going to see this uh, first thing first we are going to see the icmp message whenever you write ip 4.4.4.4 this is the message which is created by your icmp what is this message this is type 
eight message echo ping request and that is what i mentioned that whenever you write ping 4.4.4.4 icmp protocol is going to generate this ecmp uh, echo ping request and when somebody gets this ping request it is going to reply with uh, the uh, the the reply message we are going to see the what reply comes from 4.4.4.4 but try to understand this is the case right now let me uh, remove this and again i am here let me open the ip part of it now this guy as i mentioned right you have generated an icmp message which we have seen what was this message echo no problem at all right now ip layer is going to put its header on top of it what is the source ip address of this 12.1 we already know right 12.1 is source destination is going to be 4.4.4 no problems at all this is your ip header and this is going to become the data for ip header third thing who is going to put the data link header here the source mac and the destination mac it is as simple as that guys try to understand try to understand this whatever i am going to showcase you this is how you are going to see the packets in wireshark right if it is not the icmp packet maybe it is the tcp packet and that is why you are going to see here another header which is the tcp header and icmp is not going to be there because there is no icmp header then it is as simple as that we are going to see whenever we talk about this udp right you are going to see udp message so it is as simple as that no problems at all this is very very simple things okay these are these are very very simple things so let me delete it let me move back to my board now let's talk about the main topic of today we have discussed so many things we have dis discussed ping icmp we have, we have discussed uh, udp we have discussed tdl we have seen the packet but now let's try to combine all these things to know what trace route is how it works how it is basically useful for us it is as simple as that so let's try to come to the main board here now we are going to tell you that what actually or let's understand how trace route works but before that but before that why we are using trace route right what problems it is solving for us okay so if you write suppose if i go on r1 and if i write trace route to 4.4.4.4 actually i am presuming for now everything is working fine all routers have necessary routes to forward this packet right so basically whenever i write trace route dot 4.4.4 the command is going to reply me right the command is going to reply me what are the various routers and corresponding ip addresses which are part of this complete network or which are between me and 4.4.4.4 so it is going to be very interesting guys right so this protocol can tell me because there might be many paths one path is there the other path is there right which path my packet has taken from source to destination i am traced out protocol is going to tell me that right and if this trace, trace route protocol is not working and is stopped somewhere then it means that there is some problem with respect to my network and i need to debug it but where should i need to start debugging because right now i can show you four i am showing you four routers there can be 30 35 routers from where you start beginning your troubleshooting if there is a problem so for now i am presuming that everything is working fine and i have mentioned trace route 4.4.4.4 on this router this router is going to give me this command is going to give me the results like this this uh, first hop is 192.168.12.2 which is this one then it is going to give me uh, 23.3 i am just writing the last two octets which is this one and then it is going to give me uh, 34.4 and then it stops stops means the path 
to the destination is traversed right without any problem it means that to reach to 4.4.4 what are the different hops or routers whatever whatever the path i have taken whatever the different routers were there it is going to tell me the ip address of those routers right so here basically i can say that if r1 wants to talk to a 4.4.4.4 it has to travel to a device which is having this ip address it has to travel to the device which is having this ip address and this one so basically i can mention the name also if i have enabled the dns so it is going to say that r2 r3 and r4 these are the devices basically uh, to which i need to pass when i reach this part 4.4.4.4 the final device is actually r4 where this host is it is as simple as that right so this is but what is the use usefulness of it right suppose r3 does not have the route to send the packet towards r4 and i have generated a route towards uh, i have generated a packet uh, say ip packet 4.4.4.4 suppose right so my packet is uh, r2 is going to say that okay uh, basically till 12.2 is not a problem if i see that after if i write 4.4.4 and i do not see anything after it and my trace route is not complete then it means what is it it, it, it is indicating that there is no problem till r2 because i am getting that the my packet is going there uh, to r2 because r2 is replying it how it is replying it i am going to discuss with you do not worry about but first thing first i am going to tell you that what trace route is doing right trace route if it is complete no problem at all it is going to tell me the middle hops which are going how it is it is pretty interesting to know how basically it is it is calculated these hops and i am going to tell you do not worry about it but for now if i write down trace route 4.4.4.4 if the path is complete then basically i am pretty sure that these are the routers which are between me and 4.4.4.4 but if the path is not complete if the trace route is not complete and trace route is stopped at this point it means that there is a problem i cannot reach to my destination right i cannot reach to my destination and basically uh, uh, till r2 there is not a problem because i am getting some replies from it so i should not be worried about in terms of uh, networking that r2 till now r2 is working fine i should start debugging with the r3 so this actually this tool tells me that where to start debugging on on which device where uh, to start debugging on right and it is a big uh, uh, big friend of ours that in in the complete network where to begin the tr troubleshooting in terms of network routes okay but now let's try to understand how all these things happens how trace route is going to tell you that problem is exactly at this router or if there is no problem then how it is going to calculate the middle routers how the packet is going on right so again what i am going to do is i am going to write trace route 4.4.4.4 and where i am writing i am writing on r1 as soon as r1 creates this see the things what is going on behind the scenes r4 is creating and i am talking about how trace route works on cisco routers or any linux machine right windows we can talk about later but as we are network engineer let's see how basically it works uh, on these routers so this router r1 is going to create a udp message first why udp i will be explaining you do not worry about it but what exactly what are the main things in the udp packet so this is your udp message generated by uh, this router whenever i route write trace route it is going to generate this udp message the source is maybe uh, the source port may be 123 and we choose any random destination number say destination port any random i do not know about it i do not know what what applications are running on i have chosen this number and i hope that maybe uh, if this is there or not I, it, it doesn't matter i'll tell you why and how right once this udb message is generated 
this is the next protocol in the stack is the uh, you know uh, first one is transport then we go to network layer transport layer we have chosen udp and that is why this header and this there is no data in that so do not worry because uh, data is not there so network layer uh, uh, basically we have what ip addresses so what is going to be the ip address i am drawing uh, from red here so there is going to be source ip address and destination ip address so destination is going to be what 4.4.4.4 and what is the source uh, source is going to be 12.1 because this router says that if you want to send it to this packet to 4.4.4 you are going via this uh, interface which is having ip address this one right and then basically you are going to have what you are going to have another header which is your data link uh, header where you put source and destination mac i'm not including that because most of the time we will be discussing about it. so this is going to be my ip header right it is as simple as that and this complete packet is my ip packet where this one is the data for the ip packet it is as simple as that so as soon as i write trace root 4.4.4.4 this router is going to generate a udp message and then encapsulate into ip packet and inside that ip packet we know what is the source and what is the destination the destination is 4.4.4.4 because trace route is going to 4.4.4 and the source is going to be whatever the interface which through which it is this packet is going out it is as simple as that no problems at all now what is going to happen one more important thing which this guy does which guy r1 does although ip address contains a lot of field but i am showcasing you only two or three so this guy says that the ttl of this the time to live value for this is not 255 this is only one and i have deliberately marked it as one the ttl value is going to be one that is it right along with source ip address destination ip address it is going to say in the ip header there is a field which is ttl right it is going to say it is one and then it sends this packet towards r2 at r2 this packet is going to be received with the ttl value of one and the destination of 4.4.4.4 .4 .4 .4. uh, i am not interested in writing in this complete packet you know i am just writing the destination ip address and this ttl value r2 is going to see this okay the packet wants to go to 4.4.4.4 and i'm presuming routing is perfect there is no problem with respect to routing routing is going on right it sees that i, I if i want to send it then basically I, I need to send it towards r3 but when i send it to r3 i need to decrease a ttl value right and if i decrease the ttl value it is going to be zero right and if it is going to be zero guys then this router at the first place cannot send this ip packet towards r3 although it has a route right although it knows to reach 4.4.4.4 it has to send the packet towards r3 but it is not going to and the reason is the ttl value is now zero whenever it wants to send this packet it is going to be zero and that is why it is going to be discarded but r2 is going to send this intimation back to the uh, source and who is the source the source is r1 what is the ip address of the source the ip address of the source is 12.1 this one right so what r2 is going to do r2 is going to generate an icmp message in which it says that dude the problem is ttl expired I cannot send your message but what on the behind the scene r1 is going to learn let's see what r1 is doing here r1 is learning right i will write down with the blue color r1 is saying okay i deliberately send a packet with ttl value one and i am getting a response it means that i am getting a response from the uh, next hop because ttl was one right so it is going to receive by uh, by my first hop whatever is the first hop of this packet right and it is going to see that from where this ttl expired message is coming the ttl expired message is coming from 12.2 so r1 says that 
the result of this trace route, whatever I have written, trace route to 4.4.4.4, right? The result is I am getting uh, a TTL expired from what? I am receiving a TTL expired from 192.168.12.2. It means that this router is the first router of my path because I have sent a TTL value with one and that guy has been uh, must have decreased the TTL to zero and that is why it's not able to send and that is why I am learning this thing right that the first hop is 12.2 now what is going to happen once it receives the TTL expired it is going to create this was the first message it could create it it is going to create another message this time everything is going to be same but the TTL value the TTL value of this message is going to be 2 everything is going to be same absolutely same without any change right but yes uh, sometimes basically I, uh, these UDP port numbers can going to be increased it doesn't matter right increase by one uh, so maybe uh, I have uh, so this is the case basically it, it could be increased right so if I am saying absolutely same it doesn't mean absolutely same maybe the port number could be changed that is okay so TTL is equal to 2 this time so what is going to happen the same message is going to be reached here but this time it is going to be reached with TTL value is equal to 2 now TTL is equal to 2 now it is not 1 what is going to happen this router is going to receive this message okay 4.4.4.4 is the destination it is going to see its routing table and it is going to reduce the TTL from 2 to 1 and forward this packet it is not 0 now it is going to be received here the TTL of this value the TTL of this packet is going to be 1 and then we have this 4.4.4.4 it is as simple as that now R3 is going to see this packet it is seeing the routing table okay I have a route but if I want to send this packet over this interface towards R4 I need to decrease the TTL to one point right to one number Again, it is going to be TTL is equal to zero and R3 is not going to uh, forward it. And if it cannot forward it, it can do at least one thing. It is going to inform. It is going to inform to this router R1, the source of the packet, this guy. Right. It is going to say, boss, I cannot forward your message, whatever you are sending. And that is what R1 wanted. R1, uh, now this time R3 is sending uh, ICMP message of TTL expired right TTL expired this time from where it is going to come it is going to come from 20 to 23.3 uh, which is the IP address present at the router 3 so intelligently this is going to learn so uh, so by the way guys uh, here it was R2 so R1 is building this so this was R2 uh, so here basically now the route uh, now there is a TTL expired message from whom the TTL expired message is from what R3 right and what is the IP address configured here is 192.168.12. what not it is 23.3 it is as simple as that right so now R1 knows that I have first hop which is R2 and with that address is 12.1 I have second hop which is 23.3 uh, which is R3 right now so basically see from time to live expired message how this router one is intelligently knowing that okay you are in middle you are in middle but now it is going to continue this thing and now we are at the number three place it means that this uh, whenever it gets a TTL expired message it is going to create another packet this time with TTL is equal to 3 it is as simple as that now here it is going to be reached as 3 here it is going to be reached as 2 and now basically it is going to decrease here and now we are getting at R4 what we are getting at R4 TTL is equal to 1 here right one value and then the destination IP address is 4.4.4.4 .4 .4 .4. And by the way, inside that we have a UDP also, where the port number is 
थ्री फोर फाइव थ्री फोर फाइव राइट वट एवर इट इज सो दिस वॉज योर यू डी पी पैकेट वॉज ऑल्सो देर ऑल दिस पैकेट वॉज हेयर ऑल्सो बट आई हेवन ड्रॉन इट बट हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू नीड इट सो दैट इज वाई आई एम ड्रॉइंग इट सो नाउ टी टी एल इज इक्वल टू वन हेयर फोर डॉट फोर डॉट फोर इट इज ऑलरेडी अटैच टू मी एज ए लूप बैक सो बेसिकली आई डो नॉट वॉन्ट टू फॉरवर्ड इट टू एनी अदर डिवाइस सो आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू डिक्रीज इट टी टी एल बिकॉज आई एम नॉट फॉरवर्डिंग इट टू अनदर राउटर इफ आई फॉरवर्ड इफ आई आफ्टर सींग माई राउटिंग टेबल इफ आई सी दैट इट इज इट शुड गो टू अनदर राउटर देन आई नीड टू डिक्रीज इट टी टी एल बट नाउ आई कैन नॉट डिक्रीज इट टी टी एल बिकॉज दिस गाय फोर डॉट फोर डॉट फोर इज राइट देयर ऑन माई इंटरफेस विच इज द लूप बैक इंटरफेस एंड वी हैव टॉक अबाउट लूप बैक इंटरफेस इट इज एज सिंपल एज दैट नो प्रॉब्लम एट ऑल right so what is going to happen it is going to say that perfect the network layer has done his work i am going to remove this network layer and what i am will be with this router 4 is going to be with this what the source port and destination port of this udp it means that it is going to have this udp header which talks about 843345 the destination port maybe the uh, source port is 1223 Right, which was encapsulated in the IP packet. So no worries. But now, what is going to happen at R4 uh, transport layer? Because now network layer uh, job is done. This was delivered to transport layer, and transport layer what is working on? This packet is for UDP. UDP is going to see what the destination port, and it is going to see whether anybody is listening on this destination port. Application number one, two, number three, no. nobody is going to listen listening on this because we have deliberately chosen a port which is so high which is unlikely to be uh, used by uh, used by an application so no application is going to see that it means that udp udp cannot deliver it to the application because there is no application which is listening at 84345 and if there is no application listening then udp has to discard this message right but it does an intelligent thing it informs network layer that i cannot forward it as i mentioned right and if it cannot forward a packet it is going to tell back this source who is the source of this packet the source of this packet is 12.1 the ip address right it is going to say it is going to generate an icmp message but this time this message is not ttl expired this message is port unreachable you are getting my point it is going to say port unreachable because port is not reachable and if port is not reachable r4 is discarding the packet and after discarding the packet it is informing the source what is the source of the packet the source of the packet is 192.168.12.1 which was this if you draw this packet this the this was the packet right we were just playing around with the ttl values and the udp ports also okay when this packet reaches here it is pretty easy to understand that now i am not getting time to live expired i am not getting icmp ttl expired i am getting port is unreachable it means that if i try if i use my knowledge if i use my knowledge then basically network layer has successfully delivered deliver this packet to the destination because now i am getting a destination from the destination port and reachable message which is a which is a concept of transport layer it means that there is a host r4 and i was able to deliver my packet to r4 right but at the transport layer of uh, at transport layer of this r4 is not able to deliver because the application was not there but can i assume from this message icmp port unreachable message that the message is delivered successfully it means that there is no problem from me towards the destination because at network layer there is no problem there might be a problem at the receiver at the transport layer but because i am a network engineer i talk about routes right so in terms of network layer there is no problem because i have delivered my message to the destination 4.4.4.4 right 
there might be a problem with the application layer that is, sorry transport layer or the application is not listening but through this port unreachable guys just pay close attention to this this is not ttl expired message this is port unreachable if i get a final message as a port unreachable message then it means that this guy is r4 here which is saying that uh, from where it is going to get the port unreachable message from this address 34.4 192.168.34.4 if and if I am getting the port unreachable message, it means that my trace route is done. No problem because I'm getting the port unreachable. But suppose, suppose there is a problem at R3. R3 is not able to, R3 doesn't have even the route for it, right? So we are going to send first uh, this guy with TTL equal to one. This guy would have responded. No problem, right? And if we have sent it, uh, if we have sent this guy to here, this guy doesn't have any route so no problem at all if it doesn't have route then basically i am not going to get anything right so it means that the where is the problem the route is not at r3 what would i have got i have got until this portion only i have got only reply from 12.2 which is saying ttl expired i would not have received message for 23.3 or 34.4 so it means that there is a r2 in my path which is working fine but the hop next to r2 is not working fine so this is the starting point of my troubleshooting right so previously we took an example where everything is working fine and that is why i got the port unreachable if i'm getting the port unreachable message from my destination it means that at network layer everything is working fine no issues with respect to routes but what is going on here if there is a problem at r3 r3 doesn't have a route then of course till r2 i would have received everything and i can start debugging working on r3 so this is how you can use troubleshoot in locating a device where you should start looking into it or where you start troubleshooting with okay it is as simple as that now i have explained all these things to you but it is good to see whether everything is in this way on the Wireshark also or not, right? So we are going to see this UDP packets, right? But before that, I would like to tell you one more thing, because in actual implementation, uh, by default, uh, as I mentioned that we, uh, okay. As I mentioned that as a part of this, uh, we are sending only one packet here with TTL is equal to one actually what happened we sent three messages right with ttl equal to one to this right three messages to uh, uh with ttl one then three messages with ttl two and then three messages with ttl three and why do we are doing this because we are also calculating the uh, uh delay time right and what basically you are going to see whenever you write trace route if you write trace route 4.4.4 .4 .4, Right. What you are going to see that uh, two millisecond, suppose two millisecond and two millisecond, and then you are going to see this 192.168.12.2. What is the meaning of this? Is the first hop, and basically to reach the first hop, basically we are reaching it two milliseconds, right? Or maybe three millisecond or two millisecond, right? So basically, how we are calculating these millisecond? Because we are sending three probes which we call this message basically is called as the prob message. And if I'm sending it with TTL is equal to one, right? We send three such message. TTL is equal to two, we send three such message. But whatever I have explained you holds true. If we say trace route 4.4.4 .4 and prob whatever the number, it should be is equal to, the number is equal to uh, one. So this way basically we are not going to send three, right? So do not get confused if you see three UDP messages generated for TTL1 because this is the case because that is why we came to know about this thing, right? The delay value, just like the ICMP ping, right? So I am going to take you now to uh, Wireshark to see. And by the way, guys, do not confuse. We are going to send, we are going to see TTL equal to one, the same packet, this complete packet, but we are going to see 
three packets with TTL1. We are going to see three packets with TTL2. Right? So let's have a look at it. So here you go. Let me open this. And now this time, as you can see, I have opened it uh, using, I have filtered this Wireshark using UDP, right? So here you go. And what I'm doing here is I have this router R1, where I have put this command, trace route to 4.4.4.4.4, .4 .4 .4 .4, right? And what is going to happen? It is generated this UDP message as a result of this. The source of this is 12.1 and I know that you understand why the 12.1 and then the destination is going to be 4.4.4.4, right? The message is UDP. Now let's try to see what exactly inside it. So here we are on this message, the 30th number message, right? Frame 30, 30th message. So if you see that I have generated this user data gram, gram protocol, right? Uh, first thing first, as I mentioned that we have, we will be generating a UDP message and inside this message, we are going to have source port and destination port. The destination port is 334 and 34. Source, let's leave it. You can read it from here. We have destination port here right? and source port here. And now it is going to be encapsulated in this IP packet. The IP packet is going to have what? Uh, source IP address, destination IP address, source IP address is this one. Destination IP address is this one. What is the destination? 4.4.4.4, which is right here, you can see. And what is the source? 12.1. You can see the diagram in the board, right? So we are pretty good with the, uh, with this fact. But now let's see. Let's see the trick, what out is doing. Let's remove this. Let's see here. In this field, if you see the transport internet uh, protocol version 4, this is the IP packet, this one. And we have a TTL field also here. And what we have in this TTL field, we have time to live is equal to 1. Right? As you can see here. And basically in the, in the protocol, uh, Field of this uh, internet header, you can see the next protocol is 17, which is UDP. And of course, we have UDP. And that is why we have a UDP header, right? Here you go. It is a UDP. It is as simple as that. And then basically there is going to be Ethernet, which in which we, we are not much interested because it is going to be put uh, source MAC and destination MAC. Try to understand the packet structure. This is how your packet looks. The video length is going to be approximately uh, one hour, 30, 40 minutes, but that is fine because you're learning a lot. This, these are your fundamental, these are your basics, right? But now let's see as a result, what the router is responding us. So this was our UDP message. And that then basically this is what the first router, which is 12. Two is responding us back. We are talking about packet number 31, and the packet number 31 is coming from where? It is this was our R1. This uh, here here are R2, and basically the interface address is 12.2. This one, this one is 12.1. So we have sent them the UDP message with the TTL value equal to one. It has decreased it, and that is why it is not able to forward. We are getting the ICMP message back, right? And this message is from 12.2 and that is why we are seeing this message is from 12.2 here and this is uh, uh, to 12.1 which protocol message icmp we are going to see that and what it is saying it is saying time to live exceeded ttl value is exceeded right or time to live expire so if you see here if you see here if i open this message and see here Actually, it is going to sh uh, tell me time to live exceeded, time to live is zero now. And the type of this message is type 11. TTL has been expired, it is zero now. And that is what basically first ICMP, uh, this message is created by this router two, which is encapsulating this into the IP header. And the IP header is going to be what? This one.
the IP header is going to be this one, right? Here, the source is 192.12.1. This is 12.1, and it's towards 12. Uh, sorry, 12.2. It is towards 12.1. It is as simple as as that, right? 12.2, 12.1, and then basically, so you get to know that. We are getting time exceeded or TTL expired message from 12.2, and that is why I came to know. That is why I came to know the next hop in my path is R2. And as I mentioned, by default, you are going to see three hops. Sorry, you are going to see three messages, right? I'll showcase you exactly three messages you are going to see. Maybe the port number is going to be different, but let's see. Here you go. If I if I talk about the second message is again from 12.1 towards 4.4.4, right? And I am getting the reply back time to live from 12.2. If I am getting the reply from 12.2, it is the second router, right? So we are sending TTL equal to one, three probes, three UDP message encapsulated in IP with TTL equal to one. And that is why we are receiving three time to live exceeded message. One is this one, other is this one, and this one is this one, right? So you can open any, any, anybody, right? And if I open this UDP, you are going to see the time to live is one because there are three messages of time to live one. Here you go. It is as simple as that, right? But now let's try to see, uh, these are the three messages, which one? This one is the first UDP. This one is the second UDP. This one is the third UDP. Now the fourth one should be having TTL value of two because three messages were with the TTL equal to one. Now let's open this message, which is from 12.1 to 4.4.4. And that is why we are receiving C. Uh, we, are rece uh, we were having R1, we were having R2, we were having R3. And the R3 interface address was 23. Uh, this one was 23.3 and that is why the fourth message which is of TTL equal to uh, 2 We are getting a reply of time exceeded from R3 instead of R2 because T equal to 2 will reach here and it will reach here T equal to 1. It is as simple as that Right, so if I showcase you here if I delete this once again and Showcase you the fourth packet. This one is the fourth packet. You can see here the time to live value is two right here and we are talking about this packet now this one packet number 43 leave it uh, this one packet number 43 this one right if i clear this once again we are talking about here packet number 43 which is this one and here you can see frame 43 and then basically time to live value is two it is as simple as that. And if I go into the reply, reply is coming from uh, reply is coming from 12 23.3, which is router number R3. And there are going to be three such probes by default, right? Now let's talk about the last thing, the last message, right? Which is your port unreachable. So now let's talk about message this one here okay let me change the board. so we are talking about this udp message it is going from 192 168 12.1 to 4.4 packet number is 56 frame number is 56 right so if you can see the time to live value is three here right so what we are talking about now we are reached to R4 with TTL equal to uh, 3, right? Sorry, uh, we have generated TTL equal to 3, but uh, R, R2 has decreased, decreased it to one, uh, 2. R3 is going to decrease it to 2, and then basically we are going to receive it TTL 1. But we are seeing everything on R1, right? That is why time to live is 3. But when it's going to reach to here, it is going to be TTL equal to 1. But now the packet is reached to the destination, which is 4.4.4.4, which is attached right here. So we are going to see that instead of sending TTL expired, it is going to send that port unreachable message, which you can see right here. Right here, you can see the port unreachable message. Destination unreachable, port unreachable. 
right if i open the internet control message to you here you are going to see that this is my uh, not uh, this, uh, yeah so this is my destination unreachable or port unreachable it is right and that is why this device come to know okay my trace path is complete i have reached to r4 it is as simple as that okay so it is going to send ttl equal to one three messages ttl equal to two three messages and once it get the port unreachable message it is going to uh, it is going to see that okay my trace is complete i can share this uh, this uh, trace or basically pick up file in the description folder if you want to read more if you want to analyze more you can do that but the topology is going to be same whatever i have showcased you okay so having said that let's move to our board let me delete all these things let me move let me move towards my board which is this one and i hope that now you understand the things behind trace route i still understand that you know that there are a lot of things and the video length is one hour 40 minutes but believe me guys if you want to understand things right if you want to go a little bit deeper if you want to be a better network engineer you should know all these things and you should spend time also right so maybe uh, you may need one two three coffee uh, uh, coffee cups in going through this uh, while going through this video but believe me it is going to be very very helpful for you because it is increasing your fun fundamental knowledge of networking having said that uh, once again i would like to thank you to to uh, uh, for watching this series for sharing this with your friends i am very thankful to you and hope uh, uh, to see you in next videos having said that bye bye and thanks for being a wonderful audience bye for now Thank you.